Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode. Hope you've all been well. Last time on Link's Awakening, we beat the Key Cavern, took out them slimy Dodongos and the Slime Eye, got ourselves our third instrument, and we've got a lot to do in this episode, so I went ahead and moved forward with things a little bit, got a lot of progress that I need to make in a small amount of time, so let's go ahead and get started. If you remember last time in the trade sequence, we wound up collecting a stick from Kiki after she and her friends helped build the bridge. And with that stick, we might be able to do something here with Taren. Taren loves our nice stick. He's a man of culture. Of course you can. Taren, having little to no self-preservation, is gonna poke this beehive. The man is just a rascal who loves getting himself into all kinds of trouble. So, <laughs> that's very weird how the game phrases that, that the stick became the honeycomb. That's not really how things work, but we'll take it. Now that we've got bombs, any of those explodable walls on the overworld can be approached and blown up and entered. So there's a fairy fountain here. We don't need that right right now, but that could be something of use later on. So this episode is going to be a pretty busy one. A lot of things that I need to do. Going to activate that teleporter. That's actually going to be useful for making sure that this episode goes the way that it's planned. Speed things along. This is a small room that you can come in whenever you'd like to, but it's obviously easier to do once you've got the... I feel like I'm doing this wrong, and if I am, I'm just gonna redo it. But obviously this is a room that you can't really do until you've got the... Yes, I did this very wrong. This is a room that you can't do until you got the power bracelet. So I did get the piece of heart. So I'm not a complete bonehead, just most of the time. So we'll pop out and we'll reset. I'll give you guys three guesses what's in that chest. I bet you'll figure it out. It's pretty crazy. It's actually the, the final final boss key to, to, to beat the game, which is kind of crazy that they'd put it in such an early spot, right? Just kidding. No, no. There's gonna be a compilation at some point of me unwantingly collecting pieces of power and guardian acorns. So there's some more rupees for us. We love those. This, I guess, helps us progress a little quicker. I guess I shouldn't be complaining too much. It is making me able to expedite the process. So this is a kind of weird, spoopy place to go. This is the Dream Shrine. Kind of meta. This is very Inception-y, if you think about it. I don't want to spoil what this game's all about, but you'll understand later what that means. <laughs> also kind of spoils it, too, that I have the Piece of Power song playing in the background when... It would be nice to hear the Dream Shrine music. There it is. I don't know what these guys are called, surprisingly, but you can take care of them by charging forward with your Pegasus boots. Come up here. There's a chest and some weird looking device over there. This may or may not be an important item in the game. If you'll notice the jingle for acquiring an item changed a little bit to be with that ocarina. Now, this is not a hill I'm willing to die on. It's not a huge deal. And I know people say it differently depending upon where you're from, but I have some weird sort of moment where my whole body seizes up and I cringe a little bit when I hear people say ocarina. I just can't really do it. 
Say it however you want to, but it's always going to be Ocarina. It's always Ocarina of Time. It's not Ocarina of Time or Mario, Mario, whatever. Live and let live, I get it, but just ugh, can't do it. So now that we've got this Ocarina, Ocarinas are used to play songs, obviously. You stick your fingers over the holes, you blow into the one side of it, and you can play some tunes. If you remember, one of our friends in the village is a bit of a songstress and loves to sing. So maybe we should try out our ocarina with her and see what happens. Now, wasn't that something? Of course it sticks in my mind. So we get the Ballad of the Windfish. And now that we do have that, if you'll see, there's a little icon of Marin next to the ocarina. If you hit Y, it'll play that song. And if you pull up the submenu, Try that again. If you pull up the submin, you can see that there's space for potentially two more songs. So we'll see what that's about later. So now we've got an ocarina. We've got a beehive, a teleporter, a mysterious teleporter. I wonder what that could be. And now, got some crabs. Make sure you don't have crabs, everybody. There are apples on trees in this version of Link's Awakening, which is really cool. You can't do anything with them. You can't hack and slash the tree. However, if you get a running start, you can knock those down. Get yourselves an apple. I don't quite remember how many they restore. I think that maybe the green ones give you three and the red ones give you one. But that's kind of a handy little way to recover some health if you're short. Pretty convenient. So, we have kind of some loose ends that I'm not sure where we should go. So maybe we'll, we'll phone a friend. Okay, so... Dude is kind of patronizing us a little bit. Not a fan of that old man. But he is right. However, we're not able to really do much with that information yet. Going to the southeast of the island actually won't net you anything. You can head down that way if you want to, but unfortunately, it's... You're not able to progress. There is potentially an obstacle in the way that we'll need to deal with. And it seems like maybe there's some credence to that tune that we just got that might help us move somebody. So we're actually going to be headed to the Animal Village in this episode. It has one of my favorite songs in the game. Should be anybody's favorite, it's a great track. Some cute characters. Can only be accessed once you have the Pegasus boots. And if you saw there, if you're you got some keen eyes in that water, there was some sunken treasure. This is the animal village. This is one of the coolest places in the game. It's pretty short in how they utilize it, but it's still pretty fun. Pretty cute. If you pop in here, there's a rabbit. So 
this rabbit tells us that there's a lazy walrus in the way. That's kind of rude. You don't know him. Maybe he's just doing his best, okay? Just because he is a millennial doesn't make him lazy. There is an alligator here, another one. Mr. Shul Donovich, who has made a mermaid statue, but it's not complete. Huh. I wonder if that's something we might come back to later. And his hippo model wants nothing to do with us. So a lesson learned, folks. Uh, stay out of the way of art. If you're not about it, then know your place. Jeez. So you can come here first when you're exploring and it'll kind of give you a heads up, but we already got that special thing. That's actually another part of the trade quest, but we can't do it quite yet. We'll come back to that later. We will pop into the animal village a couple more times. And this is even more special that we have to come into later, later, later in the game. So they keep, they keep you coming back. And these animals can talk and they know Marin. So I wonder if that's gonna play any part in how things go eventually. So who is this fellow? Chef Bear? Of course, pineapple. Does it go on pizza, everybody? Does pineapple go on pizza? Reply in the comments. Let's uh, let's get some feelings going. So it appears that there's a certain attitude that the people of Animal Village have towards this walrus. I don't know what he's done to wrong them, but clearly they have no qualms with talking some smack about our aquatic friend. Let's go ahead and activate this teleporter. Now, once you have two teleporters activated, there's a few across the map of Link's Awakening. You can travel from one spot to the other instantly, which is really, really nice. And in the original game, there was no sub menu for it. You would just have to keep trial and error until it would get you to where you wanted to go. This one, it lets you choose. So you can start in the animal village, move yourselves to the prairie, and then that gets you right to where Mabe Village is. So having that sort of fast travel system in this game is really nice. Another quality of life feature that they implemented, which I really appreciate, makes things a lot simpler. Let's go down here. Sneak past the teleporter. Some more apples if you need them, if you're low on some health. Let's see what this sign says. So, there was said walrus. We'll bother him in a moment. I'm gonna bomb this wall and come back to it. Snatch up this piece of heart. Right quick. And do some spelunking for a moment. This is a little cavern to test your bombing slash, oh geez, slash falling in hole skills. Uh, that's actually intended. That's what the game wants you to do. I want you to comically fail. Everything is pre-planned. So you can take a bomb. I don't know. Can we throw it over this? We can, but unfortunately that's too large of a gap for us to cross even with the Pegasus boots. So we'll have to come back to that later. We'll see what that's about. Maybe after a dungeon or two. A little bit of a spoiler is that the item required for that spot is actually my favorite item in the game. So we can see that the desert is there to our right. 
and this poorly treated, uh, bullied Warris, who's dreaming of Marin. So they must have some sort of connection. They go way back. Perhaps Marin was a former employee of SeaWorld. Now, activating that teleporter was important because we need to actually go and see if we can get Marin to do us a favor. So we can take it back to the prairie. Fast travel our way back. Otherwise, you'd be doing quite a bit of hoofing it. And that's not fun to watch or to do. So now that we're back in Mabe Village, we can grab Ma Wait a second. She... Marin? She was here by the rooster. Do you know where she is? Uh, you were supposed to know you were here. You were watching her. I can't be everybody's chaperone. Wonder if... Do you think the telephone booth will know? Getting kind of worried. Just the same old, same old. No update for us. Well... Hmm... What's a nice place to go and enjoy a relaxing afternoon? Maybe... Maybe she's down at the beach, I don't know. Who doesn't love going to the beach? I feel like everybody loves the beach. Another question for you fans. If you could choose, and you can only choose one place, beach or mountains? You gotta make a decision. You can only pick one. Which one does it for you? Are you more into the mountain scene? The hiking? The elevated landscapes? The vertigo? Or maybe you're more a fan of the nice warm sand and crashing waves. continue this way. There's a monkey right here throwing some nuts around. What a crazy guy. Let's grab this chest really quick while we're here in the area. 50 more rupees. Very nice. Oh, well, would you look who it is? What a coincidence. No. So, Marin is apparently is not turned off by us rejecting her. She's gonna keep it real no matter what. I respect that. It's a very titular scene of the game, so I'll be quiet for a few moments. Um, probably from, uh, Coconuts. Sorry, I... we dozed off. <laughs> so that cycles through the commentary again.
and we're gonna be an attentive listener. Let's show, let's show Marin that we're invested in this conversation. Show some respect. She seems to be into us. It's only the respectful thing to do as a gentleman might. So yeah, we were listening. So that wasn't a hard sell. Seems like Marin's on board. <laughs> this is the best part is uh, Marin comes with us. And the music changes to reflect that we have Marin with us now. Some more flutes in the background. Marin apparently is also incredible at jumping. So good for her. Some incredible ups from Marin. We're actually gonna head back the way that we came. Oh, excuse you. Excuse you. Excuse us. Uh, we're on a date, actually. So if you could, uh, Amscray. That's Pig Latin for those of you uninitiated. I kind of like the pan flute version of the overworld theme. It's kind of fun. Marin watching her boyfriend get beat up by spear pigs. That's not very endearing, is it? You know, a little, re <laughs> a little reckless here. We've got a job to do, and there's so many people trying to get in our way! Can you just... Skadoo? <laughs> As we get shocked to death and go the wrong way, we need to head back into the village. And south, from where we were before. We're coming, walrus, I promise! We'll be there soon. Marin's trucking it. Look at her. She's scooting a little booty. All right. Apparently the guy's just trying to get some rest and everybody just wants to talk smack about him. Poor guy. But he does love this song. Seems to do the trick. So it appears as though Marin is gonna stick around in the animal village for a while. We've got a very vast, scary, spoopy desert to explore, but we'll do that next time. Make some more progress. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoyed hanging out with you. Have a good one. Bye!